SSMS 22 is now generally available, including GitHub Copilot support and preview, as well as support for SQL Server 2025. Learn all about it and more and see some cool demos this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome back to Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by McKenna, uh, the product manager for SSMS. McKenna, welcome to Data Exposed. Thanks so much, Anna. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. It's great to have you, and I'm shocked that in years and years of you being around, you've never been on Data Exposed. So we're so thrilled to have you. And what better moment than to talk about SSMS 22 and the year we've had? Yay! Yes, absolutely. It has been such a wild year uh, for SSMS. Um, and over the past year, it's hard to believe that actually a year ago is when SSMS 21 public preview came out. And now here we are in November uh, and SSMS 22 GA has just been released. It's amazing. Uh, so and we've done so much. The team's done so much. So why so much? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a couple big reasons. Uh, the first was moving off of the deprecated ISO shell uh, that SSMS had been on for so long. Uh, with Visual Studio 2022, uh, we were able to move uh, SSMS 21 and in a lot of ways really rebuild SSMS from the ground up. Uh, and then with the announcements of Visual Studio 2026 and SQL Server 2025, it just presented another really great opportunity for us to come out with another major version update of SSMS 22, and that's where we are today. Awesome, great. And so if I'm using it today, should I use both? Should I just use 22? What's your take? Yeah, great question. Uh, so using the Visual Studio installer, uh, which is the same uh, installer that we used for SSMS 21, you actually are able to install both versions side by side. Um, and the Visual Studio installer is really important because it is also where you can go to modify your SSMS installation. This is where you'll get your workloads and components. So if you want to install GitHub Copilot in SSMS, this is where you'll go. Uh, things like SSIS, SSAS, RS. Um, we've also got some pretty cool um, components like the query hint recommendation tool or the migration assistant. All of that is found in the installer. It's not part of SSMS 22 sort of base installation. We did that to keep the footprint small and make it sort of flexible for however you want to use SSMS. Awesome, that's great. What else has landed in SSMS 22? Yeah, lots of good stuff. Um, a couple of really big uh, headliners here. We introduced Windows ARM 64 support with SSMS 22. This has been a really big ask from the community. Uh, we are really excited to introduce it. Um, we're bringing it to SSMS 22 in phases, sort of similar to how we approached dark theme. Um, SSMS, as you know, is a really, really large application, and we just want to be careful with how we're rolling it out and uh, taking, again, just an incremental approach. So uh, really, really excited about that. We've also got SQL Server 2025 support. Um, introduced GitHub Copilot in SSMS, which is currently in preview. And this is a big switch. I know Aaron's got a series on um, just Copilots in SSMS, but we we went from uh, Azure OpenAI Copilot now to GitHub Copilot. Uh, and that has been really well received and we're excited to see AI tools sort of evolve within SSMS. Uh, we also brought some innovations to um, the SSMS experience when connecting to SQL databases in Fabric, as well as Fabric data warehouses. Um, like I just mentioned uh, on the modification the installation slide, uh, the query hint recommendation tool is this really cool component that was added um, that can kind of automate and test different query hints to help you show how you might improve your queries. Uh, a Various amount of UX improvements. Um, I'll show some of those when I open up SSMS, but zooming the results grid was a really big request. Uh, you're now also able to open an execution plan in a new tab, and we added a lot of improvements and updates into the modern connection dialog. 
Uh, also with the move to Visual Studio 2026, we have a bunch of new themes. Uh, so SSMS Bluefee has unfortunately been retired, but we've replaced it with all of these other really exciting light and dark themes. Uh, so you can customize SSMS to look and feel how you want it. People waited so many years for dark mode and now they have like <laughs> a billion themes to choose from. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Awesome. I love it. Okay. Uh, we want to see it. What are some of your favorite things or highlights from uh, SSMS 22? Totally. So let me jump into SSMS 22. And the first thing that I just wanted to point out is I'm connected to a my fabric database, um, my SQL database in Fabric. And one of the first things we did was replace the long uh, server name. Um, so it used to sort of be this jumbled string and was kind of hard to tell what that is. So now I can tell, oh, this is my Fabric DB. That's what I've named it in Fabric. Um, we've also added group by schema support in Object Explorer. Uh, this is just for Fabric SQL databases for now. We're working on expanding that to support other SQL Server types. Um, but if I go and toggle this and I open my database back up, you can see that we've got the uh, group by schema showing there. So that's that's similar to the experience that you would see in the Fabric Web. That's sort of why we started uh, adding the group by schema capability to Fabric so that it would match what Fabric users are used to seeing in the web editor experience. So. That's super exciting, and we've got more to come on the group by schema front. Um, so now I just wanted to run a, a quick query and show off some of the new um, SQL Server 2025 support we've put in. Uh, so I've got this query here, and you can see that it's returning. Well, actually, you can't really see because it's pretty small. So if I zoom in, no way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> If I zoom in, uh, you can see that I have this JSON data here, um, and it's actually linked. So if I click one of these, it'll open up a new tab, and it'll have my JSON data formatted. So really nice. That's been a capability that's been um, missing and, and has been uh, highly requested, obviously, uh, with the introdu introduction of JSON data types uh, to SQL Server 2025. Um, so that's really exciting. Uh, we can also rename this tab. So if I wanted to, you know, instead of calling it SQL Query 6, um, I can just call this, this is my recent inventory script. Um, and that just adds even more, you know, organization to my tabs that I have over here. Um, so those are just a couple of my favorite things. Um, you know, they they might seem like small improvements, but really these are the sort of everyday functions that people rely on to do their work. So we're just trying to really listen to customers and, and make this experience better. Awesome. I love it. I love the the Zoom scroll. I actually hadn't seen that yet, uh, but that's awesome. Um, okay, so now we have to ask, like, obviously the team's doing just such amazing stuff and everyone in the community and the field, everything we see online is like this really resonating with folks. Um, so we'd love to know, like, what else are you guys doing? What are you going to do next? Yeah. Yes. Uh, don't worry. Even though we had such a wild roller coaster of a year, um, we are still working hard on delivering you uh, the value and the quality that you expect from SSMS. So first thing on our list is performance and stability improvements. And when we're building our roadmap, we're really looking at sort of two buckets of things. We have, you know, some fundamental items that we need to do, security updates, um, all of that. But then the second half is really customer feedback. And uh, we have heard a lot from the community that there are performance and stability concerns. So we're spending a lot of time to really deeply investigate that and try to deliver some improvements in those areas. Um, looking at some customer uh, feature requests, uh, we've gotten some requests for additional export formats uh, with the ADS retirement. Uh, we want to make sure that people have um, a really good solution there to sort of replace any workflows that they were using ADS for. So additional export formats for the results grid, that includes JSON, that includes Excel. Um, and then, like I mentioned earlier, expanding the group by schema support in Object Explorer. Again, that's another highly requested feature, also something that we had in Azure Data Studio 
Um, so we wanna make sure that we bring that along into SSMS. Uh, we're also continuing to partner closely with the SQL Server 2025 team. Um, any additional features that come online, we're gonna make sure that there's a really solid SSMS experience there. Um, again, working on expanding our ARM64 support uh, and roll that out across the application and then continuing to evolve and improve uh, the GitHub Copilot experience in SMS. I love it. This is awesome. And I love uh, the link so people can even go see the roadmap. <laughs> um, McKenna, this was an awesome episode. I'm really excited about SSMS 22, the GA, everything the team has done in 2025. I'm looking forward to what you guys are going to build in 2026. Um, thanks so much for coming on the show. To our viewers, if you like this episode, go ahead, give it a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. We'll put some links in the description below. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. <laughs>